Welcome back. When it comes to layout using CSS, a very important skill of a developer, there are probably three really good ways to do it this year. One is something that we've discussed, and that is Flexbox. Another one was Bootstrap 4. And we're going to learn about a new way of doing it, which is called CSS Grid. And if you go for a Google image search and type in something like CSS Flexbox versus Grid, you're going to get a lot of images explaining what the differences are, why you would use one over the other. But I, I want to just preface the next couple of videos and let you know that there's no one versus the other, one that wins out over the other. There's always a trade-off. And the best way to think about these tools is as complementary tools. That is, they both work really, really well together. You don't only have to use just Flexbox or just CSS Grid. Ideally, use them both together. And I'll show you later on how we can use both Flexbox and CSS Grid to pretty much do anything we want when it comes to layout. But just to start us off, a good way to think about Flexbox versus CSS Grid is that Flexbox is really good to use if you just have one dimensional. Maybe you're only thinking about columns and how to do layout based on columns. CSS Grids are really, really powerful, especially when it comes to two-dimensional layouts. That is, both columns and rows. So it's really, really good at, let's say, image galleries or listing out your portfolio projects on your own personal web page. And we'll get into that. But now you might be asking yourself, OK, isn't this what Bootstrap allows us to do? And you'd be right. Bootstrap came at a time when we didn't have Flexbox and CSS Grid. It came at a time when we just had display and floats and positioning CSS properties that, as we saw, are really, really difficult to use when it comes to layouts. And Bootstrap solved that problem. It gave us this grid system that we can use within Bootstrap to make really beautiful layouts. So that was really, really useful. But on your resume, if you say that you know Bootstrap 4, yeah, that's good, but it won't be that impressive to employers anymore, especially if you're going for a real developer job, which is why I haven't focused too much on Bootstrap 4. Because I argue that everything that you can do in Bootstrap 4, although sometimes it's easy because it comes with their own pre-built components, you can do now using Flexbox and CSS Grid. And because being a good developer means not just learning one library that always changes, always evolves, it's learning the fundamentals. It's more important for us to learn Flexbox and CSS Grid because now, if we know these two, we can create any sort of layouts we want. One last thing. When it comes to CSS Grid, it's a new feature. Most web browsers have support for it, but we do see a few reds and older versions of browsers that do not support CSS Grid. When we look at Flexbox, it's a little bit better because it's older than CSS Grid. And we've learned all about this before, right? Each browser has their own implementation and any new feature has to be implemented individually. So although CSS Grid has become pretty standard across the web. If you're trying to support older browsers or something like Opera Mini, then you might want to consider using floats to do layout. Although, to be honest, most of the web is moving towards CSS Grid and Flexbox. So I just recommend starting to use this right away because eventually this will have really, really good support. But enough talk. I think it's time for us to learn CSS Grids to see what all the hype is about and start working on a fun little project. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.